I was a youth pastor, training as an associate pastor to one day be a lead pastor. The more I started preaching, the more I started leading a Bible study, the more I realized I didn't know what I thought I knew, and the more, in a sense, Reformed theology started coming to the forefront. At, at first, I didn't really care, but the more I started reading the scriptures, the more I saw a very sovereign, powerful, and loving God. I, hadn't, I didn't have a, a Reformed theology background, Presbyterianism, any of that. I was really interested to see what Reformed theology was all about. Every time I read something from John Calvin or something from a, a Puritan author, it excited me. I wanted what they had, the passion that they had for the Lord, their understanding of the Word of God. That's That was kind of that, where that sense started to come from, is that if I am going to be a pastor one day, if that is something the Lord would have for me, that I do need to be trained in this. It's not something that's unimportant. It's not something that you can just stand up into the pulpit and say, oh yeah, like this is, this is what the Word of God says when you don't really know it, or if you're not actually called to it. And so I wanted to discern my call. I wanted to make sure that I was called to be a pastor, that I was a workman that is approved, and that I want to be rightly handling the Word of Truth, as 2 Timothy talks about. I think one thing I didn't really expect, which sounds kind of silly, was how much of the course load, how, how heavy the course load would be. But I don't actually put that in a negative. What you're studying for, what you're being called to, is 100% worth it. I know that I want a pastor that I know who has had this immense opportunity to train to be in his word, he knows his Bible well, he knows theology well, he knows the language as well. For me, that's exciting to know that at the end of the four years, how much you can accomplish. If you look at a bookshelf and you're filled with all these books that you've read cover to cover, that you've put time into, that you've prayed over, and you have notes all the way through the margins, that's exciting for me to say I've studied and I want to go and serve God's people now. To have these four years as kind of a discipleship years to, to really immerse yourself is almost a once in a lifetime opportunity. Being excited about Reformed theology again, coming into a seminary that would be teaching it and, and training me up in it. And now I get to sit under it for the Lord's day, morning and evening. And that's been an immense blessing. Yeah, if we never got plugged into a local church, made friends, built that community, had other children playing with our daughter, people seeing us week after week, how are you doing, praying for us. Yeah, we know that they are caring about our lives, that are, they're seeing us go through seminary, understand where we're at, um, have our, other people that are going to seminary in that church. That's the connection we needed. The seminary does a lot. We have those opportunities to be rubbing shoulders with men that are training for the ministry. But it's also that local church that I think is what bridged the gap for us coming from Canada and then coming to seminary is that we have now this outlet that kind of meets in the middle and, and, tr and continues that training, but also gives us fellowship, gives us friendship, yeah, gives us good, good teaching and seeing where we could be one day in the future. Leaving Canada, I was actually almost put the term ahead, I was afraid. When we were leaving, my wife was very early in her pregnancy. We we're gonna have like thousands of dollars to have a baby here. We don't know anybody, it's a new community, new church, new seminary new city, everything is completely different. It was hard to, to think about even bridging that gap in that time of our life, but there was also the sense of, well, if we're gonna be training for the ministry to be helping people and pointing them towards Jesus, is that what we need to do as well? And we need to trust the Lord that he is sovereign, he will see us through. But we had our, our NICU experience, and that is we had our pregnancy become a lot more complicated, and then our daughter come months early. And so born very premature, meaning to be in, in NICU care, and then in pediatric care and all this stuff. And so all those things were scary. But again, seeing the, the sovereign hand of God and having that local church support, having friends and family and people all over the United States, all over Canada, and even other countries praying for us was incredibly encouraging. I mean, this is exactly where my wife wanted to be. Um, she loves how sunny it is. She's always outside with the girls. My wife's able to go to all these different parks. She's with um, combined with our local church. And with the seminary, she goes to all these different um, seminary wife events or, or women fellowship events. And then that takes some of the pressure off for me is that I can feel like I can actually pour into my studies. And then when I come home, I can pour into my family, knowing that they, in a sense, kind of have this life where they're cared with a lot of people going through the exact same experiences. And it's just a, an immense blessing that way, just to, to see that our wives are cared for and that we are able to be um, trained up and yeah, knowing that yeah, the Lord will work all these things out. So,